good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, Hurricane Track here. It's now Monday, the 29th of July, 2024. Doing a bit of traveling this week with the family, so you're going to see some different backgrounds from time to time. But of course, I'm taking a look at the tropics just like you are, and we're here to discuss what's happening, namely the beginnings of what looks like an active period in the eastern Pacific. Spoiler alert, no worries for anybody with any interest in Mexico on the Pacific side. I'm sure people in the Acapulco area and anybody that has interest down there probably still a little bit of you know shell-shocked from what happened last year with Otis. So anything that does come into play in the East Pack, I'm assuming, gets everybody's attention down there. Nothing that I'm seeing looks like it's going to be a, a bother to that region, so that's great. And then we have to look at the Atlantic. Is that going to be the next area to start to wake up? It's been kind of quiet since Barrel. Very, very quiet. Lots of dry air around. And as we flip the calendar from July into August, naturally things should start to get to be more favorable in the Atlantic Basin. We call that climatology, and that will start to come into play as well. So we'll take a look at all of that and more in today's update. All right, thanks for joining me. Let's get started. First, I think this is a good starting point. The anomalies map, always about a day behind this updated yesterday, so we're looking at July 28th. There's our trying to be La Nina of a fairly small area of real estate in the East Pack where temperatures are warmer than normal. Most of the Atlantic Basin is still running quite a bit above the long-term average, so no changes there to speak of, nothing significant. But I want to draw your attention to this area right here. I'll try to put an arrow there. It's a little bit cooler in the Northwest Gulf now relative to average. Why? Well, we've had a pretty persistent southwesterly flow through here, this stalled frontal boundary that's been around for a while, and that's helped us sort of move across the water there, kind of agitate things, um, kind of like trade winds do down here in the East Pack. When you get strong trades, you get that La Nina to come in. It's not the same principle, but it's just been unsettled through here. All of last week and that persistent southwest flow really helping to take down those water temperatures just a little bit. However, that being said, don't let the blue fool you. Blue does not mean cool. It just means it's a color on the scale down here, all right? We're still looking at 29 Celsius or so, so basically 83, 84 Fahrenheit. But it's interesting, too, because the warmest anomalies, well, not a, well. that's true, the warmest anomalies and actual temperatures are in the eastern Gulf, and just to kind of prove that, we can look at the anomalies. There they are. Not ridiculously warm compared to average, but still pretty warm in the eastern Gulf. And if anything were to get in there, we would have to worry about the potential for very high ocean heat content and maybe rapid intensification. We know that. We've seen that the last several years, really dating back to when Michael made landfall near Mexico Beach, and it rapidly intensified. Ida did in 2021. Laura in 2020, we can just go on and on and on, right? So we got to watch that. Luckily, right now, nothing to worry about. But it's going to be interesting to see how quick does this fill back in now that the pattern has changed, which I'll show you in just a moment, and we don't have that persistent southwest surface flow. What about the east coast and mid-Atlantic and elsewhere? Well, the 26 Celsius line, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly, that's about right here. You can see that very nicely outlined on this map. Everything south of there, pretty warm, 26, 27, 28, 29, even 30 Celsius trying to creep in off the coast of Jacksonville, south and east of Savannah. Pamlico Sound, nice and warm, low 80s as is most of the Chesapeake Bay region. But just offshore, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, all the way up to New England, cooler temperatures. But we are still at the tail end of July. I do expect, especially as we get a big Bermuda Azores high setting up and really dominating as we get into August, we'll start to push these warmer temperatures north. And we got to watch that. It's been a long time since New England has had a major hurricane, even, even a threat. It's been a long time, right? And there's always that balance between trying to stoke fear in people and just reminding them, look, you are vulnerable to hurricanes in Long Island, in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and, of course, eastern Massachusetts, even the Gulf of Maine. Certainly the remnants can come through on the backside of these areas. We've seen that. Ida, another example, 2021. So all of this stuff just matters you know, as we keep track of things. 
water temperatures gradually warming up. We're gradually getting closer to peak season. And just reminding our friends up in the Northeast, you should pay attention too, even though it's been a long time. We don't know when your time will be up again and a hurricane will come your way. And it doesn't take any kind of significant 1938 event to really shake things up. A lot more people up there now, a lot more infrastructure to disrupt. So just please keep aware. That's all we're wanting you to do. All right? So what's happening out in the tropics? Well, in the East Pack, a couple of areas that look like they're going to try to develop. Maybe. This is 30% over the next seven days. This one's higher. So this is our big winner, I believe. I mean, we'll see. East Pack's been struggling a little bit, but we've got pretty good model consensus. So what does it look like on the seven-day outlook? There you go. And then, I mean, look, this is what we thought the Atlantic was going to look like. Instead, it is the East Pack right now. But I believe, as do a lot of other people, that once this pattern comes and goes, because we do have this enhanced area coming through what we call this Kelvin wave, part of the background state just changing, and it goes from west to east. Once that subsides, the Atlantic Basin should take off. So this right here doesn't look like it's going to do much. This one pretty much a shoe in, and then we got to watch this one closely after that. But again, everything clearly is heading away from the Mexican coastline over here, right? So that's great to see with any interest, not just the folks down in Acapulco, still, of course, dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Otis from last year. So here's what it all looks like on satellite this afternoon. Here's our one disturbance that looks like it's well on its way to trying to develop. There will be more action down here, as I just showed you. Then we've got some stuff over here farther to the west. Eh, inconsequential whether or not that develops kind of doesn't matter. Now, here's what I was telling you. Look, we don't have that cloud pattern stretched out all across from the northwest gulf through the east coast. We have a different pattern set up, so it's going to be interesting to see how quickly this area rebounds sea surface temperature wise. Remember a few days ago when this was showing up in the modeling? Well, there it is. It's all occluded now. A little low pressure area, kind of dreary up here in New England, speaking of the New England area. But it is interesting. The models were showing some kind of energy coming off and then pinwheeling in. Non tropical in nature, but it doesn't matter. It's cloudy and kind of rainy up there. Now, let's slide the uh, satellite animation to the east just a little bit more. And there's a few interesting things here, nothing that really jumps out. If you didn't know what you were looking for, you probably wouldn't understand, I guess, why the National Hurricane Center has that. You go, well, wait a minute, let's look at the satellite imagery. What are they looking at? You know, why is that there? Well, let's just look at it. So near the Leewards uh, and Greater Antilles area, an area of disturbed weather over the central tropical Atlantic, is uh, expected to interact with an approaching tropical wave during the next couple of days. Environmental conditions are forecast to become conducive for some development thereafter, and a tropical depression could form later this week while the system is in the vicinity of the Greater Antilles or the Bahamas. Greater Antilles through this area right here. And then, of course, there are the Bahamas. So again, let's go back to the satellite imagery. What are they looking at? What could possibly be triggering that? Well, we got a broad turning right in here. A lot of dry air in there overall, lack of deep convection. There's a few thunderstorms down here, but there's more energy arriving and the overall pattern not horribly unfavorable. And the main thing is all this dry air around. You can tell there's dry air there just from the way the cloud picture looks. That's the Saharan air layer. Now watch when I show it to you on a different product here. This is the precipitable water animation. I think this is the first time I've shown this this year. Uh, let's use blue here to make it pop a little better. So there's our feature right in there. You can see it's a pretty big envelope of energy trying to wrap up. And then there should be more energy trying to approach eventually and kind of pull in what available moisture there is. And then the whole thing tries to consolidate somewhere in this region in a few days. At least that is the thought as of now. But there is still quite a bit of that mid-level dry air um, Tried to do this. There we go. We'll get to the vorticity in a minute. You can see that dry air here. I mean, come on, you know where it is, right? Look at all that. Definitely enveloping a good chunk of the Atlantic. But our moisture and our tropical wave kind of embedded all in here, it's trying, you know, but we're still at the end of July, the sile season. 
as, yeah, I don't know if there is such a thing, a season, but typically the Saharan air layer starts to die off as we get into August. So we're still in July, and this is expected. Uh, but notice, when you get more to the west over here, less of that dry air. So, yeah, we're going to have to watch it. could be a big rainmaker uh, for parts of the lesser Antilles, the greater Antilles, maybe eventually the Bahamas. But beyond that, the models are kind of waffling. We'll get to that in just a minute. There's not a real good consensus for what might happen with this system. Vorticity-wise, you guys know this is one of my favorite products. Uh, pretty good area of energy out here in the East Pack. That's why we think stuff will develop there. There's our vorticity signature for our low up there, tangled up with New England, by the way. And then out in the tropical Atlantic, there's just nothing congealing. Everything's just kind of spread out. We're not seeing any concentrated area. And until and unless that does happen, it has to look a lot more like this, by the way, right here, but not over cold waters of the Northwest Atlantic. That is the signature that I'm looking for. If this was down here, I would be a lot more concerned, right? It's not, so I'm not too concerned just yet. Any development with this system is probably going to take quite a while. Now, look, the GFS, not very enthused with our system to speak of at all. This is the western part of the Atlantic Basin. <clears throat> and uh, let's use blue here. Just to catch up on your geography, here is the east coast, southeast coast. There's Florida and so forth and so on. You got it. You got your bearings. And we're looking at the 5,000-foot level of the atmosphere, uh, what we call the 850 millibar vorticity, cyclonic vorticity. That's what I'm looking for. Does anything gather and bundle up? And you can clearly see the wave right there. You can see the kink in the isobars. Well, the height lines in this case, not necessarily isobars. But it's there, the reflection there at the 5,000-foot level with a little bit of energy, all that yellow down there, some cyclonic vorticity, but not much. And it gets into the Gulf eventually after passing through the Antilles there, tries to ramp up close to somewhere, I don't know, Florida Panhandle, Mobile, whatever. But this is eight days out, seven to eight days out. And uh, we'll just have to see. You know, gut tells me something will try to develop from it, probably a big rainmaker. Maybe more, but we just don't have a lot of consistency amongst the models. If we go and we look at the overnight run of the Euro, for example, and I know you guys probably know all of this, but I thought I would show you. Look, it's just not helpful, like, because we don't have, oh, every model is showing it. There's the Euro's depiction, and it gets the system going passes close to my neck of the woods, even though I probably wouldn't be there, but story for another day. Maybe I will. Maybe I have to come back from this family vacation early. We'll see. But it scrapes the Outer Banks, heads off into the Atlantic from there, actually starting to strengthen. But again, this is 210 hours out. Eh, we shall see. What about the East Pack? I want to show you that real quick. That's going to get very busy. A lot more consistency in the modeling here. One, two... And uh, it skipped a few frames there. That's okay. Uh, this is good anyway. We want to take it out to a week's time as it is. So, yeah, we got one system here and then the second one here. And that will pile up some ace points and tick some names off the list, so to speak, in the eastern Pacific. But, again, nothing that looks like it's going to threaten Mexico. But real quick, back to the uh, Atlantic. Let's go back to the GFS. Let's widen this out to the full basin if I can get it to work here. And you can see, just kind of reflecting on how I'm just not convinced on all of this happening, really. Um, and let's get it to the current time there. There we are. There's just not a lot of energy out here to work with to begin things. So I know it could change over here, but I just don't. I don't have a lot of concern for it. I've had a few people email they tagging me on Twitter, which is fine. Please do. I love it. You know, I try to respond when I can, but I'm not real concerned about it. The pattern just doesn't feel like it's going to lead to something significant. But, and here's where we want to make sure we understand things, that energy right there, whether it's from the Euro, the Canadian, the Icon, the GFS, doesn't matter. If it does pass through this area, that's a big rainmaker. And rain and tropical Air masses, all that stuff, the mountains down here, the geography of the area, everything about it could spell trouble. And that is what we need to be worrying about in the end. Well, not worrying. I hate that word. I messed up by saying it. But you know what I mean? Concerned with, focusing on, impacts, 
not what category would it be? Is there a hurricane threat? We've got to stop thinking that way and think, okay, that is some energy that's going to be spreading across the greater Antilles first, probably getting into the Bahamas, maybe the Florida Straits. Again, this is about a week out or so, and that's what we need to be watching for. And if it develops into something more, then we can be concerned with how to prep for something even more. But right now, I don't see any evidence that we need to be too concerned with much just yet, and neither does the National Hurricane Center. But we'll see. The East Pack's going to light up, it looks like, and we'll see what happens with the Atlantic after that. And then we'll wrap up the month of July, and then we begin that trek through August, September, and October, which we know are our most dangerous months. We have to just face that and make sure that's what we're really focusing on and that we are ready for. All right? As always, thank you for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. Hopefully you learned something, and uh, I'll go enjoy some time with the family. I'm Mark Seth, Hurricane Track. From all of us at our Hurricane Track family, we appreciate you tuning in. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.